We're three days and 300 miles in to our 600 mile overlanding trip across the state of Wisconsin. We set off from the Illinois border two days ago with the goal of finding a legal UTV route which could take our family all the way to the shores of Lake Superior. On the first day of the trip, we were plagued with engine trouble that we traced back to a bad belt that we were able to replace at camp. Our day two ride was relatively uneventful, taking us through the rolling hills of Monroe County, past Amish settlements, and into the Black River State Forest. We've made good progress in our first two days and our spirits are high, but we still have 300 miles left to simply reach Lake Superior, 800 miles to go, including the return trip home. This is the story of our family's attempt to cross the state of Wisconsin in our UTV and blaze a trail for UTV overlanders like us to follow in the future. Hey guys, welcome back for part two. Thanks so much for joining us. Wanted to say a quick thank you to our 4,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Yeah, I'm shocked that 4,000 of you <laughs> actually find us entertaining or educational enough to uh, to subscribe to. I think so. they're coming back to watch more of our mistakes. <laughs> yeah, probably, right? Learn, Learn from us. To do. Yes. <laughs> But we also noticed that about two thirds of our views are from totally new viewers. So if you're new to the channel, we've got some really cool adventures coming we up. We're actually we getting prepped for a trip right now down to Utah. We're really excited about. So if you'd hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, that'll make sure that you don't miss out on anything. And it is a great way, the most important way to show your support for a channel like ours. Thank you so much. We set off from our campsite at Lake Arbutus and rode north on the off-road trails of the Clark County State Forest, a familiar route we've enjoyed many times before on weekend rides with friends and family. The afternoon ride was hot, and after leaving the trails of the Clark County Forest behind us, we endured an hour-long ride on flat, straight county roads before reaching the southernmost part of the Shaquamagon Nicolay National Forest, where we met up with the Perkinstown ORV trails. We planned to take the Perkinstown trails to a spot we thought would make a nice place for our third night of camping. Hi. The bendy trees. There we go, easy, because we got luggage on the top. Back there. I don't know, you drove away pretty quick. I can't see, but I don't think so. I think that's what we said when we lost our sleeping bags. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Probably. Here's a bummer. We've been traveling probably about 400 miles. We're going through the Perkinstown ORV trails, which are awesome, great trails. They run right up to this National Forest campground here. There's no way for us to access the campground. So unfortunately, that's still the kind of things that you gotta deal with. Uh, I'm not sure what everybody's afraid of. 
us driving a UTV, parking it into a campsite, and then setting up and being quiet. We are generally the quietest people at most of the campsites we have. So anyways, that's, uh, that's a major bummer. So now we gotta go see if we can find another spot to camp or we'll have to find some dispersed camping or something like that around here. But this would have been a great stop for us to uh, stay on the shores of the lake, but we, we just can't access it. That's frustrating. This was a county park, is that right? Or? Yeah, this is a county park. Wow. Looks nicer than the national one, so. Yeah, this is awesome. Well done, big fall. There's not a soul here. There's firewood here for us. Look at the size of the site. And it's right by the water. Three picnic tables, has wood on it already. Has a grill over the fire. Oh, oh, oh. Has access to the river right. with falls. Oh, look at that. Maybe things happen for a reason. I guess so. Never know. All right, well, we got our little hand washing and later shower system set up here. Campsite's a little mess, but we got in and the kids and Kim just wanted to hit the river, which is just over there. So went and hung out in the water, waited in the water for a little bit. Grant got bit by a leech, but he's recovered. No big deal. We got a fire started. So we're going to get the uh, tent set up, set up a real nice camp here and eat some food and relax and I think our goal tomorrow is going to be getting going pretty early. All right, well, we're going to try to get an early start this morning, so we're just going to pack up. We're going to try to find a cafe or something. One of the towns we go through to grab breakfast on the way. We got to get some more gas for the general. We got to get more ice, good on food and all the other stuff, but lots of mosquitoes here. <laughs> it's been a uh, nice camp, nice campsite, real pretty. Got the river going right by. Slept really good last night. There was lightning and thunder in the distance, but we didn't get hit by any rain, so got lucky so far. Grant is looking for gummy worms that I'm pretty sure he already ate. But, yeah, it was a nice night of camp here. Nice spot. We had the entire campground to ourselves. Nobody else here, so this was a good find. Okay. Donut time! What? Look at, look, they knew we were coming. There you go, that's right, Northwoods. Convenience. Northwoods family. Convenience there. Alright, well we just resupplied, found this nice little convenience store in Hawkins. Got some gas, topped off our uh, three gallon gas tank that we filled up this morning and now we're just hanging out. I'm finishing up my sandwich. Got a bunch of ice, we got some more food, we got some water. And we're gonna go up, uh, hit the dead horse ATV trails, which are supposedly uh, pretty good. I've heard of them before, so awesome. We're excited about that. Do some riding and uh, keep pressing north. That was a sweet little uh, gas station in the perfect place. That was probably like the cleanest, nicest gas station we've ever been to. So where do you think we're gonna end up today? Like what area? Looks like it's kind of start scouting for somewhere to stay.
I don't know how he's even like standing up. Like he's barely got his butt on the chair. He's like standing up, sleeping, leaning on the table. After a brief stop in Clam Lake, where we enjoyed a good lunch, we pressed westward toward Cable, where we explored the town while waiting for a load of laundry to finish at the laundromat. After chatting with the ladies at the Welcome Center, they recommended we check out the Drummond Lake Campground, a few miles to the north. Alright, well we got some laundry done and cooled off a little bit and we got some storms rolling in, so it's definitely... Temperature's dropping now, it feels pretty good now. Dropped 10, maybe 15 degrees here in the last 10 minutes. This is the nicest weather we've had yet, riding. Yeah, this feels really nice. That's why I'm like, just keep riding. Raining. Well, we definitely got drenched in the front seat. Yeah, we did. I am totally good. soaked. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, that's that's no good. The rain's not bad. The bad part is not having a good dry place to change. It's always something. What do you do? Go to the bar and drink. There we go. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Chippewa Valley Bank for providing us with this overhand. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Chippewa Valley Bank. Thank you guys. With this beautiful Thank overhang. You, Thank you very much, Bank. Thank you very much, Bank. It is absolutely important. You were right about that other cell coming. I was casually walking over. I'm walking right up to the start hole, and it starts downpouring. I took three steps and I got underneath. I was like, whoa, that was close. I'm glad I didn't wait any longer. I wouldn't. I would still be stuck out there. Pork chops and mashed potatoes. All right, let's see. Try it. Yeah. Better than hot dogs over the campfire. Yeah. Uh. Ah. Mama's Mama Bear Pizza. This place is a lifesaver because mm -hmm. I could be standing underneath the Dad, bank overhang or I could be. This looks like a giant Mayan cup. You're right. Or I could be eating pizza and drinking old fashioned. So. Yeah. <laughs> Don't miss Katie's. Mom, really good this, this ain't bad. This looks like a. Wait, over there by the post office? Oh. Will be there in the morning when the bank opens? No, the mosquitoes are already attacking me. One for your life! The Wait, mosquitoes no. are attacking me! There's a wild in our general right now. Yeah. Alright, well. Mosquitoes everywhere. Wow, it's I intense. Can, I can see why no one's outside. All right, well, let's get our tent set up. We 
we weren't able to find dry bags that would fit our cots before our trip. We got lucky the last couple of trips. We knew that this would happen eventually. We'd get caught in a big rainstorm and they got pretty soaked. It's getting late and it's pretty humid out, so I don't think they're going to dry before so bedtime. The, te the technique will be like to have them in those bags and then put it like a garbage bag around them. Yeah, the I guess that's possible. For the rest of the trip, right? Yeah. And then just look for some dry bags. It eventually. looks tie dye. Yeah, I've got a sleeping pad, so I'm okay. I can sleep on the ground, but... Let them dry for a little while. I mean, they were literally in bags that were holding water in them. Yeah. So, we'll see. They're nylon, at least, so maybe they'll dry quickly. We'll let them sit for a little bit. Ooh, skeeters, you're a bad. I'm gonna make this quick. Um, wound up getting just absolutely dumped on on the way up here. So, yeah, it was a rough day. Everything's wet. I'm gonna be sleeping on the ground tonight. Oh, God, these skeeters are horrible because uh, because the cot's uh, soaking wet. But I'm gonna jump in the shower and get inside the tent. We're gonna hit Lake Superior tomorrow. <laughs> Ow, they're literally biting my finger. So, we're gonna call it a night. We'll see you tomorrow. We've had everything we can laying out to dry for about the last hours we've been packing up. And things are getting pretty dry, actually. Dry quickly. Yep, the cot was still soaking wet this morning, now we're good. We're gonna get her packed up and get on the road. We got about 50 miles, uh, a little bit of roads, but mostly trails. Just talking to somebody down the uh, campground who said that the, uh, the rain yesterday, these trails can usually be pretty dusty, so the rain yesterday should really help us out keep the dust down which would be nice border up to Superior. Awesome. We're so, getting close. We are getting close. That is awesome. <laughs> Thanks guys. Real good. We can Thanks. The lake. It's cold. Oh. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we'll look cold. forward to it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. 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 We'll find them. Oh, they're terrible. That's uh, the bugs have been the worst. Yeah, it is insane. All right, well, we're on our last uh, leg of our journey to make Lake Superior, going from 
Iron River up to Lake Superior at a little town called Herbster. Herbster, like with an H or? Yep, H-E-R-B. Okay. Like Herbie. Alright, so this is called the Battle Axe ORV Trail. Five days, 580 miles, 12 counties, one state. We had faced challenges with navigation, weather, and equipment, but each obstacle we faced, we overcame, together, as a family. As we stood on the beach, humbled by the massive body of water before us, we were proud of ourselves and of each other for accomplishing what we had set out to do, but there was no trailer waiting for us when we arrived. Our trip was only half over, and the 500-mile journey home still lay ahead. A trip like this can mean different things to different people, but I think to some extent, an overlanding trip can provide an opportunity to take another journey, a journey within, so to speak, a chance for self-reflection, self-realization, and in many ways, that journey can be more impactful, more transformational than any site or physical destination you may reach. And that, to me, is what overlanding is all about.